Well, we're basically at lockup, um, so which means everything is sealed up. The, the structure is built, the windows and doors are in, and the roof is on, and the stucco is on. And uh, basically we're just waiting for trades, uh, just dodging in and out of trades, trying to get the rest of the work done. Stucco. Stucco, it took me a long time to find a contractor that I was comfortable with. Um, Basically, we found an owner-operator named Rob uh, from RWP Construction, um, and he worked out beautifully. He is an owner-operator, so he actually cares about what he does, and he's on every site. Um, so what, what stipulates a, a good stucco job? Um, the first indicator, believe it or not, is scaffolding. Uh, if they have freestanding scaffolding where it is not hooked into the wall, then you know that they sort of care about the the overall finish because if they've got the stucco that, that actually fastened into the wall where they have to stucco then when they remove that they've got a little hole there that they have to patch up so like that type of scaffolding is faster but you'll always end up with these little patches and possible um, leaks and and it's it's actually visible as well um, another way of looking at stucco is in critical light so if you have a wall that's that's facing north south you want to make sure the sun's at around noon so the sun is actually shining parallel to the wall and then that way you can pick up every imperfection in that wall whether it's waves or holes or anything because so the shadows will pick it up. Stucco color, that's another challenging bit um, because you get these you get these little you know four inch by four inch swatches of color um, so you're trying to imagine that on a whole wall. Um, we lucked out I don't think you'll ever get exactly what you expect. Uh, we were looking for sort of a prairie sage green to sort of work with the work with the environment, and I think we got it. It's uh, yeah, you just use regular paint swatches. You give it to the stucco guy, and he'll come back with a with color swatches that, and it's completely up to you. They will give you no clues because uh, they don't want to have anything to do with the color selection. Obviously, they say, "Well, no, that's up to you." So you choose. You live with it. Green panels. Well, these are the panels that uh, we installed um, in conjunction with the, with the stucco installer. Um, every building will have protrusions or penetrations, so literally holes through the walls. And as you can see over here, and we'll, we'll go up and take a look at that later, but uh, we, have, we basically have like three or four holes in each panel. So if you have a piece of conduit that's going into the stucco, you've got to seal that perfectly. And it's a little tricky with the stucco. So when we have a, this is actually called hardy board, it's a cementious product. Uh, we can cut a nice round hole in it with a hole saw. We can put the conduit into it and we can seal around that perfectly and spray the inside with spray foam. So essentially what we're doing is we're just one, one more layer of, of waterproofing because this panel essentially is, will not leak because we've got the flashing on the top where the water drips down. And then same with all the sides, it's all nice and sealed. So it's just one more layer of protection to, to seal all the, the holes in and out of the house. This panel in particular will have two big holes in it and one is for the inlet for the HRV system which is the you know the fresh air system and then it'll have another hole for the intake for the boiler which will actually be heating the house. Utility runs. We have a utility room on every floor of the house uh, realtors look at me and say, like, what are you doing? You're wasting space. Maybe we are wasting space, but the main reason we have utilities on each floor and we have a utility run that goes from the basement all the way up to the top. It's two feet wide, or two feet deep, five feet wide. And this allows us, it's, first of all, it's easier to install all the, all the plumbing, electrical, HVAC. And second of all, well, it's, so it's faster for construction and I think more importantly, it's faster for repair. It's easier for repair. And if you want to modify the system later, like if somebody wants to put a forced air furnace in here and blow all the dust around, they can do it if they want because everything is accessible. We have access to the ceilings and the floors on every floor of the house. We have a lot of water lines that are different colors, as you can see. Um, it's pretty simple, it's just a color code. Uh, red is for hot, so that supplies the hot water for all your sinks, laundry, etc. Cold water is blue, and you know, for the cold side of, of things. Uh, the black is ABS for the, the actual drain or, or waste and venting. Um, interesting one here is, is the purple line, and the purple line is for toilets 
and hose bibs for hoses going outside. The main reason we have the, the purple for the, for the toilet and the, and the outdoor hose bibs is that we can run rain, rain water. So the, basically the purple, we don't want to have it attached to any of the potable water sources in the house. It's essentially just for safety reasons. Um, we won't be doing that yet, but that could come down somewhere in the future. Um, you know, just nice straight lines, you know, you can sort of judge a plumber's work by how neat he is, or she, and uh, just how logical the layout, all this is, is done very nice. Okay, hot water recirculation. Um, the one line we don't have installed yet is for the recirculation system. The recirculation system allows you to walk into the bathroom, press a button, and it's a high-speed pump that circulates the hot water through the system, so you're not sitting there waiting turning the tap on and waiting for the hot water. So it, it doesn't waste water. It uses a small amount of electricity just to run the pump, but it, uh, and it reduces the amount of, of fuel basically burned to, to heat up that hot water that's already been pushed through the lines. So it, again, it's, 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 a one, it's an excellent uh, system because it's convenient. It's, it's a beautiful thing to have hot water instantly and it saves electricity and it saves saves fuel and water. Okay, floor joists. Why did we why did we use this system of floor joists? Um, it's a Hambro product. They're actually made in Calgary because we're trying to adhere to the 100 mile diet thing in terms of, of products for the house. Um, as you can see, they're very strong. They're steel, but the nicest thing about them is you can run utilities either north-south or east-west. So it, again, it allows for lots of flexibility. This is, this is a, a, a steel, or a chunk of uh, structural steel, but underneath it, and for this thickness, it's concrete. So we have a high mass floor with the hydronic heating. So basically the heating cycles are not up and down. You don't exactly turn your heat down at night. You keep a constant temperature, but you have this thermal inertia from the high mass that uh, it's just much easier to sort of control the temperatures of the house. And again, because of the strength of these, we can take out every interior wall in here as there are no load-bearing walls. So again, it offers flexibility for the next owner. If they want to have one big room on each floor, they can do that. They can just take out all the wood and they can redesign it any which way they want. So it's a, again, it's, just, it's a nice, flexible system. It's quiet, it's strong, it's not cheap, but it, uh, I really like it because it just offers flexibility and, and uh, a huge amount of benefit. Windows, and yeah, they, they do look a little different. These windows are, uh, it's an Inotec product. They're PVC, so they don't transfer heat very well, which is a good thing. You don't want to lose that heat from the inside to the outside. They're all triple pane. They're European design, and they're built in Abbotsford. BC. So again, we're not going outside of the country to uh, to purchase the windows. Um, they're incredibly secure. They have a pin locking system. So on most windows, you just have a lock, which is where the latch is. But um, on these ones, you have pins on all four sides of the window. So it's super hard to to break the the locking mechanism. These are tilt called tilt and turn. So you have a nice hinge system on this side. Bring it back, bring the lever up, and pull out, and you've got nice ventilation. And it's secure as well. You can't, you can't open that. Well, I suppose you could with brute force, but it's better than uh, traditional windows. In terms of security, these are pretty amazing. Um, it doesn't just lock from here. You've got these little pins on the top, well, basically on all three sides. And if you can see this little pin here, when you lock the door, it moves up and it locks into the window frame on this side. So again, very secure. It locks, it locks here, it locks there, it locks here, as well as here. And then you've got the hinges protecting it on this side. It's very robust, but it'd be a little tricky for somebody to break that from the second floor anyways, but nevertheless, it's secure. What needs to be done next? Yeah, there's a lot. Um, we've been waiting to get our electricity hooked up. Uh, NMAX is here today, believe it or not, to hook that up. They came before, but uh, there was one little thing wrong that they wouldn't hook it up, but they also didn't come up and tell me either. I was 20 feet away. Anyways, 
that's that's another story. Um, after that, we have to run gas lines, we have to run the wires for the electricity, and we have to put in an HRV system, a heat recovery ventilator that basically lets us bring fresh air in and exhaust stale air because we don't have a forced air heating system. So you need something to just sort of recirculate the, the air and actually make sure there's no carbon monoxide or in particular carbon dioxide is the biggest thing. Um, then we have a rough in inspection. So the inspectors come in and check everything out and then we can go to town and start finishing. So drywall, light fixtures, everything else. And then after that, oh man, there's lots, there's landscaping, there's finishing off the garage. So yeah, we're working out for us. It's, we're nowhere. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel now, but uh, could be a train too. It's been a year and a half now, uh, so I may not be as enthusiastic as I uh, once was when we started, but to counteract that, all I have to do is, is come up here. We're sitting on the, on the third floor deck, um, and you can see this. This is the reason we built the house. It's, uh, man, we were sitting on top of the world here. We had no idea that we would have this kind of view and just be out and see this much horizon. Um, in terms of, of the actual build, yeah, we've got no problems with that. We get a lot of contractors coming in saying, oh man, you guys are overkill, you know, you shouldn't have done this, you shouldn't have done that. And it's sort of like, you know what, we don't want to work with you. So we're getting guys that they have, take pride in their craft. And so basically everything on the house is, uh, you know, it's pretty much top notch. Um, like particularly the stucco and the, and the flashing that the stucco guys did has been amazing. So yeah, we're super happy, but I'll be, I'll be glad when this, when this project is done and we can actually live in it and, and enjoy it rather than just uh, showing up every day and, and working on it. But uh, yeah, I can't wait till it's done.